It was 1984. Ten years before the birth of the internet, data was stored on something called a floppy disk. Your iTunes meant music preserved on cassette tapes. There were no texts, tweets, or voicemail. 80s technology may seem archaic now, but there was one piece of machinery in development viewed as advanced. I often think back now about um, how did this work? How did we um, pull it off? I remember when the first hardware was produced, and we were all touching our hardware that we designed as experimental hardware down on the assembly floor and it didn't take more than a minute for the foreman to come over and yell, yell at me and others for actually touching and picking up the hardware. And I said, you don't know who you're talking to, I designed this thing. Foster started his career on the V2500 program as a design engineer. Now, more than 7,000 engines later, he's earned the title of chief engineer on one of the most successful power plants in aviation history. One of the statements was that the sun never sets on the V2500 program. It's been more than 30 years since a consortium of jet engine makers, including Pratt & Whitney, MTU, and Japanese Aero Engine Corporation, or JAC, joined together to form international aero engines to make a modular design two-shaft bypass turbofan engine that was both powerful and fuel efficient, the V2500. To me, yeah, the V is personal. With more than 7,000 engines coming off the line and more than 100 million cycles, the legacy of the V is solidified, something assembly mechanics have known for quite some time, because time flies. It has for Reggie Sandiford, who's been called upon to work on the V-Line twice in his career. For me, it's sort of like if when you buy a car. Say you buy a Buick, and you have a lot of good luck with that Buick. You know what's going to happen down the road? You're going to buy a Buick again. With the V2500s, they run efficiently, they run very well, and the dependability uh, is there. And so they will keep building, keep flying, keep adding to an idea born in the 80s. It's a decade often remembered as a time of ambition and technological innovation. And if you doubt that assessment, simply look up. Dave Foster does and smiles and gets a similar feeling when he takes the time to look back. Uh, I speak to retirees that worked on the program and they're, they sit back and they're shaking their heads. They, they would have never dreamed that uh, we'd be hitting these kind of numbers today. So it's a, a pleasant surprise and um, it is a good feeling.